Okay, hey everyone. So in the last video, we touched on, for those that were interested, how you'd go from Veeam Backup for AWS version 1 to Veeam Backup for AWS version 2. So all in here, and I'll there'll be a link in the top right-hand corner to, to go back and look at that video because it's super, super simple to, to get updated from 1 to 2, as you'd expect. But then also there's some other little updatey um, or updating um, features that have come with version 2 which actually allows us to update the underlying operating system as well so what I want to do in this video is actually look at a bit more in a bit more detail a bit more of a walkthrough of well what's changed in version 2 so to begin with just to prove that I'm on version 2 there we go we have that there um, this was actually a probably my favorite bit of of version two, I think the whole being able to check and update and how easy it was took five minutes to update from one to one to two. If we look at our history, you can see what we've done on the underlying operating system. It's an Ubuntu OS underneath. Okay, let's uh, let's now get into some of the enhancements that we've got in terms of version two. So if we look at our existing policies. Let's take this one for example. So one thing to note is, so it seems like when you do that update process, it's going to disable, it'll automatically disable these jobs uh, or these policies. So then when you come back in after the update, they're still disabled. So just bear that in mind. Um, I'm not sure if that's by design, but yeah, that that's just something that I, I noticed is the first thing from that update point of view. Um, another thing is there's been a lot of UI changes in regards to um, just how it looks and, and really th there's a good reason for it is that so some of the things is, is based on cost efficiency so being able to it's just easier to configure certain things and I'm going to get into into what that looks like so I have my job the wizard looks a little bit different but ultimately it gives you the same same output we give it a name next but this is where we we choose the iam role with sufficient permissions to perform the snapshots and the backups of the instances that we want to protect so as you can see here i've got my de default backup restore iam account which is mine and then i've also added spateri in here which so i can use his cross account backup i can back up from his instances i can back up his instances and snapshot his instances from that that was a version one thing that, that's that's already there new thing though is the ability to check these permissions so making sure that well do i have access to the ec2 instances do i have access to x y and z and so that's there as well if you run that the first time then there is that grant option which allows you to go and put that access key and the secret key in there as well pretty seamless on that front you obviously specify the regions now these could be um, you can have multiple regions in a policy for this I've only got the one because that's where my workload resides and then which of those resources do you want to have protected again nothing really different just the layout the UI it looks a little little different and a little bit maybe a little bit easier to, to navigate so it could be based on instances or you could do it based on AWS tags as well okay so then where do we want to store our snapshots or backups or what do we want to do there so this is another another feature within the version 2 of the product is the ability to perform replicas of your instances to a different region think about disaster recovery if a region goes down how can we get that back up and running in a in a different region so this is optional you don't have to have it but what you've got is so when you when you enable that you can um obviously it, we know the source but when you first go in there you may have seen just before i clicked on turning it off and and on again is that i had this had this configured to a, a specific region so what we need to do is we need to decide where we want that to to be replicated to now this could be to a different account as well as a different region so think about attacks on particular aws iam accounts or potential region outages so this is the real use case here is this is 
So we had snapshots, we had backups in version one, as you'd expect. This is now putting a, a more of a disaster recovery spin on, on what we're able to achieve. So again, I've mentioned about how in version one we could protect workloads that were in the Spiteri account, but we couldn't send data to the account, whereas we can in this instance. So we choose our target account, and then we choose the uh, target region that we want that to go to. Now, it might be that you go into the same region, but to a different account, or you go into a different target account to a different uh, to a different region. So I'm going to use North, North Virginia, US East, right next door to US East, um, the, the one that we're using in Ohio. We can choose to encrypt that data as it's going over and simply apply. Then down here, we've also got the backups. Where do we want to store those backups? And I'm going to get to the schedule and how that looks at, again, looks different in version two. So I've, I've chosen that I want it to be stored on this VMS3 repository. Again, this is all configured in that configuration tab up in the top right hand corner. You can add your repositories, your S3 repositories for your regions in the in there. So next up is our scheduling option. So straight away we have a daily retention, weekly retention, monthly, yearly. If we go into the daily, you'll see this better way of visualizing how we want to protect or when we want to protect those those the workloads that we're that we're protecting with this policy so you can see here that first of all when do you want snapshots to happen when do you want replicas to happen and when do you want backups to happen so that's important because this is our a recovery points that we want to be able to get back to and then Next, underneath that, you'll see daily retention. Well, how long are we going to keep that data for? Or how long are we going to keep those restore points for? And obviously, there's a big cost Im implication to that because the more we want to keep, the more storage we're using, the more costly that becomes. But there's also your SLAs that you want to adhere to as well. So as you can see here, I'm going to keep some... I'm good, well, I'm, no, I'm going to create an hourly snapshot every hour on the hour. I'm going to create those hourly snapshots. From a replica point of view, I'm going to replicate this instance to a different region every four hours. So I'm going to do that um, six times in a day. And then from a backup perspective, well, I just want to do that every 12 hours. Obviously, you can you can choose what and how you want that to, to look um, and to suit your, your SLA. Then when we get down to the daily retention, I'm going to decide that actually I only need to keep two snapshots because that's that's the requirement that I have. Yes, I'm going to take 24, but actually I don't need to keep them because they're irrelevant after after two of the or the third snapshot is irrelevant as long as I've got two. Same with the replicas. Yeah, okay, we're taking six during the day, but I only need to keep the last two and same for backup. But here, I want to now keep five. I want to keep five backups because this is the, the S3 repository where I'm storing that data in that native VBK format, which is then accessible from Veeam Backup and Replication, which means I can start performing additional backup copy jobs. I can use that to spin up additional workloads using that data. So I want to keep five days worth of that. So we're only taking two a day, but I'm going to keep five days worth so ultimately i'm going to keep 10 restore points in that um in that s3 repository so then you've got the cost estimation looks very similar to what it did in in version two but you're going to see now well how much does these replicas cost in terms of if i'm going to be sending data to a different region it's not going to be free so how much is it going to cost and then this gives you a a good indication of where your costs are going to lie. If you also noticed in the top right hand corner, that is a rolling um, a rolling tally of what you've what you've uh, what you've determined in the in the configuration schedule. So if I go back in here and I actually turn around and I say, okay, I want to keep seven of those or seventeen of those, you saw that that potentially went up, but again, this workload is not a heavy, 
heavy workload by any any means but if we wanted to do actually i think that might yeah so obviously this workload is not real life but it gives you a good indication of how much that would how much it would actually actually cost it gives you a good dynamic way of being able to see based on the changes that you make in the scheduling how much this is going to be then we get down to the cost estimation and it's going to give you that that overview obviously as well i'm using one instance here and this is designed to be able to back up multiple or a lot of instances so again we can search in here we can break it down we can export that we can see that and we can do some sort of cost analysis on that as well the next up we've got our settings so automatic retry and the email notifications which are configured again in that top right configuration tab then the summary this is going to break down all of that this is a typical veeam thing that we do in terms of being able to give you a summary of what what we're going to do with that we can copy that for our reporting etc and again it says about running this permission check now i know something is going to come up here and i know that we cover it in our kb but i wanted to highlight this because i don't remember seeing it in version one so this is just came up saying some of your chosen settings have warnings do you want to continue okay so i've already said that we're using us east ohio and the s3 endpoint for selected subnet is not configured so that means we're not potentially using the most optimal way to push our backups into that s3 repository and it's not a kb article but it's actually in the user guide so if you scroll down here this important part here this is where it highlights about that s3 endpoint um, being configured in in your vpc so i just wanted to show what that looks like to get rid of that that warning because how we've got that configured if i click ok that will still back up but it's like the data is is not going down its optimal path to get there which may mean more costs more egress charges etc so this is why we we advise to create this endpoint and it's really super simple to create come back come into your aws um, account create endpoint in here just find your s3 as a service so again aws services use s3 or search for s3 or scroll through the page there's only two pages it's not like it's too long choose the vbc vpc that we're using select the root table now again this is my lab so there might be various numbers of different options out there so you need to know what your what your um, access looks like or what your configuration looks like and that's and then choose what access you want to give that and then create that endpoint so then if i go back into here and i say cancel which ultimately puts us back into here if i now click finish this should in theory yeah no warning because we've created that that um s3 endpoint on our on our vpc so we touch on the aws disaster recovery so the ability to replicate those those backups or snapshots over to a secondary region or account we've touched on the harmonized way of being able to actually create those backups and snapshots using the same schedule so one of the key parts of the engine behind the behind the visual there that we saw and how how nicely it, it looks now is also we're going to use the same snapshot for the backup so we're going to be more cost effective when it when it comes to that um the other thing that i haven't got to show but just know that it's in version two is around change block tracking so the ability to actually um understand what's changed since the last backup again we want to be as efficient as possible to to make sure that the costs are, are low but also the time to be able to take that back up i think there is also one other thing to show in uh yes so this is another enhancement so this application processing the ability to take those application aware processing within the ec2 instance that you're protecting using the ssm agent I've already mentioned around the user interface 
improvements. I think it looks a lot better, cleaner, easier to, to manage and, and navigate around. Um, uh, another key point, to, if you're running file level recovery, so how we did that in version one, the worker that we used to create that to create that um, that access to the the backup or to the snapshot required a public IP address, which ultimately that that was either costing more, but it also gave you an attack surface for for people to get in. The the key part to version two is that FLR worker no longer requires that public IP address and also allows you to assign your own SSL signed certificate for that for those restores. There's also a test function, I believe, in, in that FLR process so that you can make sure that it actually works without actually restoring any any of the data. I mentioned around the updater in the previous video uh, uh, th and, and very much at the start around the operating system and how how we how we update not only our our software but also the underlying operating system there's also a public api available as well in version 2 so you can integrate that into your existing workflows and i think that's probably about it but yeah, if you'd like to see anything else on Veeam Backup for AWS, um, I did a similar video over on Veeam Backup for Azure where we covered version one and what was there. They look and feel very similar. Obviously, this is version two of AWS. They'll be in Azure version two soon enough as well that we'll, we'll go through. But yeah, hopefully that was useful. See you next time.